with the impending departure of Harry Maguire, although talks are that he doesn't feel like he's leaving and we are going to do a video solely on that. With the talks about Harry Maguire not wanting to leave and the varying opinions on Victor Lindelof despite his really strong finish to the season, the injury concerns around Raphael Varane. Uh, and let's be honest, even though we didn't really see it, there's always a, a four-match suspension potentially linking over Lissandro Martinez. I think we'd all agree. I think, yes, a striker and a central midfielder are higher on the list of priority, but the modern game relies so much on centre-halves that I don't think... I mean, look, every single transfer window, Pep goes and buys a centre-half like he's buying toilet roll for the apocalypse. So I, I think there's something in having a number of centre-halves that you can rely on. And that's not to say I think Kim Min-jae would be like a de facto third choice that we just wheel out once in a League Cup third round. I think he would play football, uh, and I think there would be a bit of a rotation in there. So... I think bringing in a Kim Min Jae not only gives us tactical flexibility if we ever decided that we wanted to go to a three, but it gives us very real strength in depth of a, you know, a, a very similar quality to our starting 11. Kim is an elite centre half and he's an elite centre half with a release clause um, that's been touted as being pretty achievable. Um, and it seems like all of the Italian press is loving the idea of Kim Min-jae going to Manchester United because it seems so on that there has to be something in it. Now, I don't think it's as on as the, the Italian press are making out, but I think there's something in it. And I think it's worth us exploring perhaps why Eric Ten Hag could do with getting Kim Min-jae. A little bit of a backup on this, right? We basically created, fabricated, lied is the other word, a rumour during the World Cup that Manchester United was in for him. Because we did a video saying that he'd be great for United. And around about the same time we dropped this video about Kim Min Jae being a great option for Manchester United, well, somebody might have been on the telly and might have just decided to tell people that they were talking to somebody around the pool about a player United might be interested in. And there was, I mean, there was a conversation around a pool, but it wasn't with anyone telling him that United were in for, for a certain defender. Anyway, so the talks around Christmas... Did we just gamble on Kim Min Jae being a great option for United and it actually... Did did we wish this into existence? <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, um, so Napoli signed Kim Min Jae um, from Fenerbahce to replace Koulibaly. And he went, obviously, for loads of money. And there was an enormous amount of pressure on him. Massive shoes to fill as Koulibaly was a complete rock for Napoli uh, for the better part of a decade. Uh, and Kim Min Jae has seamlessly stepped in and potentially even took it up a little bit of a notch. And what's more impressive is perhaps how easy he made this look. There was zero adaptation period. He was already one of the best centre-halves in Syria. And if he carries on like this, he could easily be one of the best in the world with the trajectory that he's currently on. And I think one of Kim's best um, abilities is his composure, whether that's one-on-one -on -one with an attacker or whether that's being... Um, on the ball and be impressed. His ability to remain calm in tough situations, I think, is what separates him uh, from other defenders. On the ball, his ability to break lines with good passes has really helped change defence into attack, uh, both for Napoli and for the national team. And that is a necessity that I think Derek Ten Hag wants to completely implement at United. He has got a philosophy of building and control, and it all starts from the back. And Kim Min Jae is literally in the mixer for that. Now, I was lucky enough to go watch him in person at the World Cup, and it's so striking about how thick set he is. He is like a rugby league player sort of build, which I think he's looked good in Italy. I think he looks even better in the Premier League. I think he, he would take to the Premier League like nothing we've seen before. And he was in every single outlet Serie A team of the season. I just think this is a player with an absolute destiny of being at the top. And I think that United could offer it. Like, look, Varane's probably got a couple more years at most. And I think a real knack of a good manager is, is having the replacement there for when that happens rather than having that happen and then trying to go figure that out. The cream rises to the top. So sometimes it's better to just cram the team with good options and see which one ends up getting the shirt at the end of the week.
Now, the latest reports are mixed. Laurie Whitwell says sources are playing down the prospect of an approach for Kim Min Jae at this stage. As we've already mentioned, the Italian press has basically already announced him for Manchester United, but there's nothing over this side suggesting that that is the case. The links between United and Timber have also resurfaced over the last day or so. Does that mean that we're looking at Timber as a right-back option or the centre-half option because the guy's a little bit of a hybrid and can do both? Reports yesterday in Italy uh, from Alfredo Padula and Daniel Longo suggest that the transfer is really, really close. Uh, they're not the, the hype outlets. They're pretty good Italian journalists. So what would Kim look like in a Ten Hag United? Now, like I said at the start, despite there being a lot more than this, Kim and Jay improves United by just being an extra body, someone that he can rely on. It's obvious he can't rely on Harry Maguire. And we saw this season times when Luke Shaw has had to deputise at centre-half and Lindelof has had to come in. So we have gone down to our fourth and fifth choice centre-half at times this season. So having someone come in as a third choice, you can't tell me that that guy wouldn't be utilised. There's huge question marks around the resilience of Raphael Varane. No question marks on equality, but the resilience. And here's the thing. if you Do you not remember Rio in his last season? Rio, I think, started 26 games in his final season because we had Johnny Evans and Chris Smalling and those guys would play. And that would mean Rio would only be needed once a week. And that kept the, the standard high across the board because then you wasn't overplaying Rio. It enabled him to recover and be at his best ready for the weekend. We could do the same thing with Varane and ease Kim Min Jae into English football. That would be a really smart thing for United to do for once. Lindelof's looked really good, but he's also prone to the occasional mistake, and I think Harry Maguire needs to be moved on. We need to be in a post-Maguire Manchester United. I think one of the reasons that Maguire will be off is because his lack of ability to play the ball effectively. People got blinded by data i love data and i'm not selling you data and stats is a load of rubbish because it's not it's very useful but you have to know the data and the game at the same time and marry the two together there was pe people bringing out like expected threats and ball progression for harry Maguire, be and he has high metrics of uh, ball progression doesn't tell you how often the ball comes backwards yeah, it only counts going forward. So it doesn't count it if he receives it bent back. Because one of the things that you get with Harry Maguire is he'll play the ball behind someone. He's not playing it to their strongest foot to enable them to carry on moving forward. So one of the moves that you would constantly see at United is he would pass to Luke Shaw when Luke Shaw could not go any further forward. But he's he's gone forward at like 20 metres forward at a 45 degree angle. So that counts as a progressive pass for Maguire. The ball comes back. Maguire stands on it, looks to his right and then passes it back to Luke Shaw. Now, he's just got 40 metres worth of progression on his stats, but actually, neither of those passes broke the lines. They were both very safe, and also, for years, Manchester United have been left side-centric. There's nothing up the right-hand side. We don't progress through Wan-Bissaka. We haven't had a right winger of note for how long. Manchester United, especially in the Pogba days, was extremely left side-focused. So when you're trying to bring up stats to say, Harry Maguire's a great ball progressor, you've got to watch the game. Because you watch the game, you'll see Harry Maguire hasn't looked around, hasn't decided where he's going to pass the ball. And when he gets the ball, that's when he decides to control it and then look up and go, right, where am I going to pass it? And you can guess where he's going to pass it 100 times out of 100. He is not a good ball progressor, despite what some stats might have you believe. You know, you see how many touches it takes, how quick he moves the ball. Then go watch some elite center halves. Watch... Watch Lissandro Martinez, even just as that for a start comparison. You can even watch Luke Shaw, who I think is limited in terms of his ball progression as a centre-half, not being his position, and he's still better than Harry Maguire. Going back to Kim Min Jae, this season has proven that's something he's excellent at. And the more players that you've got in defence that can play and add to the core of the team that can all play that same style of football, the better off you're going to be. The next area then needs to be a goalkeeper that can be another person who can play with his feet. Now, Kim ranks in the top 10% of European top five leagues for pass completion. He's also in the top 12% for progressive carries. So that's not something that you're going to be able to stat pad on. A progressive carry means you dribbled the ball forward. That takes skill. 
Veron and Martinez, uh, proven centre halves, they're comfortable on the ball. Kim is the same, and even Luke Shaw. So you then start to, and actually Lindelof is as well. You then start to have t- a team that's capable of of playing the ball under pressure. When you combine that ability with how good they are defensively, you begin to see how a player of his quality could really start to thrive and become something else at Manchester United. You finish in the top five in Syria for interceptions, for block shots, for clearances, and for aerials won. Yeah, but he's playing for Napoli. What are they got? Oh, you mean the champions? Right. Okay. Just checking. He's an absolute dream for any manager, and he's done it in Syria, which isn't um, as fast as the Premier League, admittedly, but he's done it with a team that have not won since Maradona was there. You know, it, it, that's some that's some doing that is, and I think this team will get picked apart a little bit. But he, he also offers something different. Eighty-seven kg weighs in at six foot two. Like I said, he's built like a rugby league second rower. He's he's an absolute animal, um, and he's got the physicality and tenacity to to de- get stuck in with any aerial battles. And there isn't as many in Italy as I think he would like. He looks like the type that would thrive off the physical combat. And there isn't really many weaknesses to him. Well, you say, oh, well, he's that big. Well, is he quick? Yeah, he's quick. The guy can move. He's agile. He's got aerial ability. He's obviously strong. He's quick. He's nimble on his feet. He keeps up with the quickest players in the league because Napoli do get up the pitch. He's men. You know, Verano Martinez uh, lack the, the raw physicality that Kim Min Jae brings. Um, but he's also got the technical side to his game. You know, there's a there's a lot of similarities between what Kim Min Jae does and and Van Dijk when he was at his peak. You know, he is the kind of player that I think Ten Hag would be absolutely rubbing his hands against. And I don't think he would have to tell him that you're coming in, you're going to be behind Varane and Martinez. I think he comes in and he goes, now you three are competing for the shirt that every weekend. And I think he says that with a straight face because he means it. And the mad thing is, he's going to probably going to cost us somewhere like uh, a little bit more than half of what Maguire cost. Now, his release clause is only active for the first 15 days of July and it allows him to leave Napoli for $55 million to $65 million, depending on the buying club. I don't know how that works. That's about 44 to £55 million. Pound. So if you got him for the lower end of that, you're talking about half a Harry Maguire for twice the player which I think means he's he's four times the value or something. That is a great centre-half that is proven internationally, in Europe, and domestically. He's got the physicality that's going to actually make him stand out more when he comes to the Premier League. I like Kim Min Jae, and I think he would be a mega, mega signing for United. Let me know your thoughts. See you in the next one. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.